mind managers. That's a book, a book about, it's about the media, it's about newspapers, television, books, media, about, but what it's really about is the information that we come across in society, the information we come across, the information we get in our daily lives. Why is it that there's certain information I know about and lots of other information that I've never come across, I've never been exposed to. The media has never exposed me to this other information, to these other perspectives on the world, on what's going on, other perspectives on what's going on in the world. Depending on what you listen to, what you read, what you watch, you are exposed to different information depending on the media you follow. And that's what, at least in a big part, this book, The Mind Managers, is about to put it to put it simply at the most basic level i guess you could say the question that the book asks is when when you're together with a friend or a group of friends when you're in in your group in your friends group when you've met together and you're talking about something why is it you're talking about that and not something else what what determines what determines what it is that we talk about with our friends in our family with our kids or with our parents? What is it that determines what we talk about in our daily lives and what we think about? Because it's really the same thing. The information where we're exposed to is going, to deter is going to determine what we think about, what we spend our time thinking about and talking about. And it's been a while since I read this book. Well, actually, I've, I've read it twice, and the most recent time was about a year ago, so not so long ago, but not super recent. But the book is quite old. I think it was written or it was published. It was put up for sale. You could buy it, buy the book in the 70s, in the 1970s. So it was probably written in the 60s or the early 70s of the last century. So it's quite, quite an old book. But I, one, one thing the book, the book talks about, one thing it focuses, focuses on is something I think about 
a lot. I'm reminded of this a lot because of things I see or things I notice in my life. They, they remind me of something in this book, something that was talked about in this book. And I'll give you an example. I'll provide you with an example. Why is it that, let's say there's a group of friends, a few friends, they're together and they're talking about Batman. Batman, I think most of you, if not all of you listening, will know what Batman is. Who Batman is. Batman is a character, a fictional character. He's not real. He's a fictional superhero, a crime fighter. He fights crime. He's a vigilante. He's not He's not part of the police force. He's not part of the government. He's a vigilante. He takes the criminals on, on his own. He takes the law into his own hands, which means he doesn't, he doesn't wait. <clears throat> Sorry. He doesn't wait for the government or the police to arrest the criminals. He doesn't just notify, just tell the police about crimes he sees happening and then let them, let the police handle it and do nothing himself. No, he takes things into his own hands and he tries to stop the crime. He tries to fight the criminals. He's a vigilante. But that's who Batman is. He's a character. But what Batman is, is a much more complicated question. Or at least the answer to that question isn't so simple. It's not so easy to answer because there's Batman movies, there's movies about Batman, but there's comics, there's books you can read. Comics have mostly pictures and a little bit of text you can read, but there's also books that are just normal books with lots of, lots of words, lots of text. There's movies, there's TV shows, there's live action movies, which means movies with real people acting, real actors performing the roles, real actors acting as Batman and the other characters. I'm just going to, I have a cup of tea at the table with me. I'm just going to take a sip of tea. Sorry. Um, there's, but there's animated movies and TV shows as well, where the voices of the characters are real. There's voice actors playing the roles, acting as the characters by speaking. But the visual part of it, what you see is animated. It's a cartoon. And there's audiobooks, there's radio dramas, like a cartoon, but without, with nothing to see, just voices. But even beyond that, even that is hard to define, to define. If I asked you, if I asked you to define, if I asked you, it's a hard word to say when you're saying it slow, because I ask you, but... If I asked you, if I asked you, 
if I asked you, what is Batman? Well, it's lots of different things. It's movies, but also comics. But it's even more than that. Because all those things are fiction. Fictional movies, fictional TV shows. But Batman isn't just fictional media. It's also... It's a cultural thing. It's something cultural. It's grown beyond just the individual TV shows or movies that it started with, that it originated with. So... From the simplest thing, there are reviews. You can, well, many years ago, you could read reviews of a, of a Batman movie or a TV show in, in a newspaper or a magazine. But now you can do that on the internet. You can watch a YouTube video reviewing the latest Batman movie. But it's even more than this. It goes beyond this. Batman is a source of ethics. It's a... It's something of interest to people who want to discuss what's right and wrong. You can see videos on YouTube of people talking about what's right and wrong, not because of something in the real world, not because of some real crime that's been committed, or something difficult, something someone had to do because of the situation they were in, and maybe it was right, or maybe it was wrong, maybe it, maybe it was wrong what they did, but they didn't have another choice. When you discuss those questions of right and wrong, you're discussing ethics, morality, what's right and wrong. But there's a lot of um, videos on YouTube discussing the ethics of Batman. Is it right to be a vigilante or is it wrong to be a vigilante? Should you... Should you take matters into your own hands or should you leave it to the police and much deeper much <clears throat> sorry much deeper questions than this that are thrown up by watching batman you can you can talk there's many very deep questions of ethics and morality that you can start talking about because of what happens in a Batman movie or what happens in a Batman comic. You can talk about the actions of Batman. And, and that's why I picked this example of Batman because he's often held up as this anti-hero. He's, he's a good guy. He's on the good side, but maybe his methods aren't, aren't so good. Maybe sometimes he does bad things to achieve good ends. He wants good, his results that he's going for, that he wants to achieve, he wants to fight crime, are something positive, maybe. But the methods he uses, his vigilantism, are maybe questionable. Maybe they're not so good. And so Batman isn't just the movies or the TV shows or the reviews of movies. It's this whole cultural thing. I don't know how to define it. It's a cultural thing. Thing is the only word I can use. It's a thing that 
can be talked about in so many different ways that can you can talk about the ethics of it you can talk about the 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 craft of of filmmaking you can talk you can review how good if it, you can review if you can talk <clears throat> sorry you can talk about if batman was a good or a bad movie and why and so this group of friends that we imagined talking about batman maybe they're saying something simple like they're asking each other if they liked the latest batman movie but maybe they're discussing amongst each, amongst themselves discussing whether discussing the ethics of batman whether whether he was justified in taking the actions that he did whether he was justified in what he did because of the good results that he wanted to achieve did those ends justify the means did the results justify the actions taken to achieve them to achieve the results so to get back to this book i was talking about the mind managers i guess the question is why is it that it's so common in our society for people to talk about a fictional character i'm using batman as an example but i think if you stop and think about it it's it's not an exception it's not an exception to the rule it's not it's not uncommon it's very common i think people talk a lot more about fictional things about things that happened in fictional movies or tv shows then they talk about what's going on in the real world what's going on in life what what real people are doing what's going on in our society and it's even more strange because if people talked a lot about batman for example but they just talked about whether the whether the whether the latest movie was good if they talked about they said ah oh, yeah um they said yeah i liked the latest movie or i didn't like it then it wouldn't be so strange but the strange thing i think is that when people talk about ethics what's right and wrong they probably i think in the world talk more about this in the context of fictional characters than they do about using any examples using any information from what's going on in the world what's going on in their own country for example people are more capable of discussing interesting questions of ethics of morality even of politics in the context of fiction but why well like i said at the beginning really it depends on what information you're exposed to if you know nothing about the politics of your country if you know nothing about who's in your prisons and why they're there if you know nothing about the crimes people are committing and the sentences how long they have to spend in prison for the crimes they're committing if you know nothing about if you know nothing about the punishments people are receiving for the different crimes they're committing if you know nothing about the conditions in the prison system 
how, what's it like to be in prison? If you know nothing about how much it's costing to maintain the prison system, how much money does the government have to pay to keep all these people in prison? If you know nothing about alternatives, alternatives, that means sometimes you see in, for example, the Scandinavian countries, in the, the Nordic countries in Northern Europe, um, you hear these stories about prisoners living very comfortable lives, almost as if they were on vacation or something. They're in prison, but they're not, they don't live in a cell. They don't live in a small little room. These are alternatives to the prison system that exist in countries like Australia or the United States. Or most countries, I think. And that's a question of all this information makes you think about the ethics of our prison system and the efficacy, how well it works. Because if people are being put in prison, they're being, <clears throat> sorry. If people are being punished, put in prison for the crimes they commit, but then they repeat those crimes again when they get out, clearly the punishment, clearly the prison system doesn't work very well. It's not very effective. So maybe, I don't know, but maybe those alternatives, alternative systems, alternative ways of doing things they have in uh, the Nordic countries, maybe not only are they more effective, Maybe they're, all, maybe they're also cheaper. So it's a win-win. Every, maybe everything is positive about them. Maybe some things are positive. Maybe some things are better than our system. Maybe other things are worse. Maybe there are pros and cons that you can compare. You can compare things. You can say, this part is better in those countries. But this part, this aspect of it, of the prison system, is worse. Having this, having access, being exposed to these alternatives, to this different information, it forces you to think, to think about things. Why are there differences? Why, why is this happening? If If, if, if prisoners, after they're released, if most of them commit the crimes again, then why are we spending all this money on the prison system? Having information forces you to think. And so the question is, <clears throat> why is it that so much of the information we're exposed to, the information that determines what we think about, it determines what we talk about with each other. Why is it, why is so much of it f about fictional characters, about fictional worlds? Wouldn't it be much better to spend our time talking about the ethics of our prison system. Because it, it could improve our lives, it could improve our society. We could discuss things and figure things out. We could come to conclusions and work out a better way of doing things. Some people might say, well, Batman is more interesting, which may be, it may be true, it's hard to say, but the problem is you can't, you don't know, because if maybe, maybe the prison system or maybe economics or maybe 
lots of different things that go on in our society are very interesting if only you knew about them if only you were you were exposed to information about them maybe you would begin to become interested in those subjects maybe you would begin to maybe you would start to get interested in what's going on in those areas And the book, The Mind Managers, Managers, you know, as the title suggests, it's about how our minds are managed. How what we think about is managed. You, you manage something, you, you um, control it in a way. You determine... For example, in a company, there's often workers, the normal workers, and above them in the hierarchy of the company, there's the management. The management, the managers, the people who are responsible for management, the managers, who do they manage? They manage the other people. They manage the normal workers who are below them in the hierarchy. The managers aren't doing the work that makes the company money. They're not doing the work that produces products or produces services that the company can then sell to make a profit. The managers are there to manage the workforce. To manage the workers they manage them they determine what they do and what they don't do they keep an eye on them they control them they make sure they're doing one thing and they make sure they're not doing something else they manage the workforce and the mind managers means the people or the systems or whatever. Something is managing our minds. Something is determining what we do think about and what we don't think about. It suggests, the title of this book suggests some sort of control. And if, if I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but if I'm right that, you know, a huge, if you, if you took all the hours people spent discussing things with each other, what proportion, what percentage of the total discussion in one country or in the Western developed world, for example, what percentage of the total amount spoken of the total words said would be about Batman in one form or another. Someone saying, I liked the latest Batman movie, or someone having a deep discussion, a very interesting discussion about morality, but about the morality of of Batman of his morality of his right and wrong and if you expand that to superheroes what percentage of discussion is about superheroes I think it would be a very high percentage when you think about how many movies how many TV shows how many books about superheroes there are how dominant how dominant it is in our culture then what are the people talking about what do people talk about they're talking about the things that are dominant 
in our culture. They're talking about superheroes. They're discussing what goes on in the movies, what happens in the movies. And like I said, it's not, it's not simplistic discussion always. Often it's very interesting. But no matter how interesting it is, it's still about what's going on in these fictional <clears throat> the discussion is about what's going on in these fictional movies it's not about something that actually happened it's not about something that happened in the real world and and I think that's what the main message of this book is. It's that this is achieved. The reason we spend so much time talking about these fictional worlds is because of their dominance in the media. But what's really important, what is emphasized in the book is the dominance in different media, in different forms of media. Because if you, if you watched a superhero movie, if you watched a Batman movie with your friends, maybe when you leave the cinema, when you come out of the cinema after the movie has finished, you talk for a while with your friends about what happened in the movie. You talk for 10 minutes or maybe even a few hours, but then, then maybe you do something else or you talk about something else. And when you meet with your friends again, the next day or a few days later, maybe you talk a bit more about the Batman movie, but probably, but probably, you begin, you begin to talk about other things as well. But, but there's also, there's also a Batman video game. And because, because you really enjoyed the movie, all of you, the group of friends, they've decided to go and buy to purchase the tie-in video game, the video game for the Batman movie, the latest video game. And so over the next month, they spend a lot of time playing this video game. And of course, when they meet up, they talk about it. And again, maybe the conversations are quite interesting. They talk about the story, about what's happening about the right and wrong of, of what Batman does. And, but even then, eventually, after a month or two, they stop playing the video game, they move on to something else, and talk about something else. But then they go on, then they go on YouTube, and because because they they were watching a few videos about Batman they were before the movie came out they watched a few reviews about the Batman movie because they wanted to see if it was good or not they were trying to decide whether they should go and see the movie so they watched some reviews of the movie so even before seeing the movie they were starting to talk about Batman a little. They were talking about whether they should see it. And now on YouTube, they're watching long 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute, hour long videos, very deep videos, very interesting videos discussing the morality of of the movie 
of Batman's character. I've even seen, I would call them philosophy videos on YouTube that are still about Batman or other superheroes talking about very deep questions, but only with information from these movies, not in the context of the real world, talking about the philosophy of Batman. And so the more present this, this culture of superheroes, let's say, is in many different forms of media, the more this presence, the more these different media reinforce each other. You don't just watch the Batman movie, talk about it for a bit, and then move on to something else. You go and play the game. And that keeps you in that culture, that keeps you talking about those things. You're being exposed to the same information, but in a different form, in a different media. And you, they reinforce each other because you read a review or you watch a review and that makes you see the movie, which makes you play the game. And because you've already got all this information about the story and many other things from the movies and the games, it's very easy to think about the to think about things like ethics or philosophy with that information. But if you saw a video about the ethics of the prison system in your country, but had no idea of the information of the facts about the prison system, how much money it costs, what if you had no idea about the outcomes, whether it worked or not, you would probably be pretty bored by a video about the prison system. It would be hard to get started with that subject, but not so for Batman or superheroes because each form of media keeps reinforcing the other. It's like if you built a wall of a house, if you piled brick upon brick, you put one, you put one brick on top of another brick and you kept doing this, you piled up the bricks to make a wall, to make a wall. But maybe after some time that wall gets damaged. It's an old wall and it starts to fall down. Bricks, some of the bricks are loose. They're not, they're not in place very well. They're loose and they start to fall out. So you build something else to reinforce that wall. You build, you add some planks, some wooden planks to the wall to reinforce it, to make sure it stays strong and continues to work. And different, the same thing, like Batman, the same thing, but in different media forms, in books, in TV shows, in movies, in reviews, in discussions, in philosophy discussions, all reinforce each other so that it makes it more and more likely that what you're talking about will be Batman. What you're thinking about will be Batman because you probably can only watch so many movies. Sometimes you get bored of, of movies and want to read a book or play a video game or watch something interesting on YouTube. And rather than starting something completely new, rather than learning about something that may be important, that if you knew about it, it could maybe be used to improve your life or improve the place where you live. 
rather than doing that, you just keep going back and forth between the same thing, but in different forms. You keep getting exposed to, to the same information, the same fictional information. But even if it's not fictional, even if it was something real, if it's the same information, just in, di just in different forms, you can never really escape that, that, that um, perspective. You can never escape that subject to maybe see all the other things, maybe some very important things that are going on in the world that need, that would be good to think about, that would be good to know about. I think I think that's it. Um, this this topic is very abstract. It's very you know, it's something like talking about politics or economics that maybe is difficult, maybe is not it's not the most interesting thing, maybe not the most useful topic subject for someone learning a language. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So, because what's more important is the way I talk about it. The, the words I use, the time I take to explain the same thing in different ways, to use different words, because I want, I want you to, I've got to, I've got to keep in mind that even though for me this is all very understandable, easy to understand, maybe for you it's a lot more difficult. So I've got to always be thinking about how I can say something that's very understandable. And I think that's more important than the subject that I talk about. But maybe also there's some subjects, maybe this one, that no one else is interested in. So if you've been listening to these podcasts, please, in the comments below, leave a simple comment. Don't, you don't have to make something very complicated. You don't have to, you don't have to write something very long, just a short comment and tell me if the subject, if the theme of the video, tell me if the content, what I was talking about was interesting or whether it was a bit boring. Um, because that will, based on your comments, I will decide what I will talk about in the next episode and that will continue. The more, if, if I read, if I read lots of comments telling me this was very boring and I read those same comments whenever, whenever I make a video about economics or politics or societal or sort of, um, topics like this about, about society or something, philosophy or something like that. If I, when I do those topics. I always see comments from you telling me that you didn't enjoy it very much. Then I'll stop making these, these, um, I'll stop talking about these sort of, these sorts of things. But if I only see one or two negative comments, it's not going to affect me because of course there's a lot more people listening, um, than just one or two. Well, I hope anyway. Um, so you've got, you've got to put in a bit of work as well. My work is to talk for a while and to think of something to talk about. 
and your work, the effort that you have to put in to help me improve this podcast, is to leave short comments for as many videos as you can, for as many podcasts as you can, for every podcast you listen to, leave a short comment and tell me whether it was interesting or whether it was boring or anything in between, whether it was not super boring, but also not super interesting. And the more often you leave comments like that, the more often I see and read comments like that, the more it will help me to find, to figure out, to find out the topics that the most people are interested in. Topics that will be of interest to most of the people listening to this podcast. All right. This is, this is way too long. 46 minutes is too long. So I'll try and keep it shorter. Tell me that as well in the comments. A very short comment. Comment, tell me what length of podcast is ideal. Tell me, tell me, tell me when a podcast is too long. Tell me when it's too short. And if I keep reading comments like that, I'll figure out the ideal time. I'll figure out the duration, the length that is the best for you. All right. See ya.